Oh, mountain you will climb up oh, running after me No walls you will tear down No walls you won't see down Oh, mountains you won't see down Oh, running after me Oh, the overwhelming Never ending Reckless love of God Oh, oh, he chases me down Finds me full and found Lives in Let's start from Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Genesis chapter 1 introduced the plan of God. Romans chapter 8 reintroduced the concept of the plan of God. Now, this teaching is very important for the child of God. Because if this particular aspect is not clear to you, there are certain realities in Christ Jesus that you will not experience. And it will not be as though... Um, God doesn't like you or God doesn't want to do it for you is because there is the law of cost and consequences there is the law of seed and harvest as long as a seed is still in your hand the harvest is still far but once the seed is planted on the earth another law is activated that makes it to become a tree and then harvest will start the same applies to the promise of glory, promise of dominion, promise of prosperity, promise of growth and breakthrough. Because a lot of Christians have held onto the promise and have despised the process. And that is why hope now deferred makes their heart sick. So in the bid to make them get into it, it seems as if the preaching of the gospel appears to be transactional. So most times people come into meetings expecting God to fix them. But they don't understand that when God made the heavens and the earth, made you and I, everything was designed to run by principles and by processes. No matter how powerful your faith is in your heart, if you don't discharge that faith by speaking and with a corresponding action, the faith will be barren. Please, am I communicating? Hello, I, am I communicating? So, no matter how great, I, I'm just using faith as an example. No matter how strong faith is in your heart, as long as there is no release of words and corresponding action to match the belief in the heart, that faith will be barren. So, when it comes to dominion, when it comes to excellence, greatness, so God now reintroduced that thing started in Genesis chapter 1. Through Paul started introducing it again. He now said, there is a realm in God you'll be where all things work together for you. It is no more a promise, it's a reality. He said, for we know that all things work together for good to those that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Now, the realm of dominion is a realm where this is not a promise. This is a realm where this is a reality. All things work together for good. That the outcome of everything will be good. But if you run with only this and make it a prayer point, make it expectation, that is where most believers get frustrated because to understand the promise, you need to read the pre-test and the post-test to have the revelation. Now, anytime you see a promise in the scripture, follow that promise down that scripture, you will discover the principle and the process that produces it. You want to be that child of God where all things work together for good. Please, are, are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, God now showed us what to do. The next verse, verse 29. You remember where we started? The concept of dominion. He said, for who he foreknew, he predestinated. He also predestinated to be 
conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. So, for all things to work together, to enter into that realm of glory, to enter into the realm, it's like you set up a man and expect him to fall and he, he's rising up, you, you, are, you are falling. The, the, the simple illustration is what happened to Mordecai and Haman. Please, are you with me? Yes. They set up a gallow to kill him. The same gallow swallowed the man that set it up. The thing that was supposed to swallow the man, the man is staying afloat and you are wondering, all things working together for him. Those that made Job when crisis happened, he, that is in the business world, this guy cannot recover. In the business world, you call it declare bankruptcy. There is no coming back out of it. But the man got twice than he had. That's dominion. That's glory. That end of that man, he said, mark his end, his peace. That possibility is not a promise in God. It's a realm in God. That's what I'm trying to introduce you into. There is a realm in God where this is not a promise. It's a reality. But God has a principle and a process that bets it. So God introduced it where he said, let us make man. The first is our image. He will function in our likeness. Then he will have. That dominion is a consequence of alignment with my image. And he blessed them. In order to deliver that possibility, the law is go back and become my image. So Paul now came here, brought up the same thing. All things will work together for good. In experience, not as a promise. You enter into that realm where your lines fall in some places. It may start off rough. That thing he says, though your beginning be small, your later end shall greatly increase. It's a realm. That at the end, when we take a stock of this man's life, the only explanation that this is God, this dominion, this is the glory of God, finding expression. The Lord God now say, this is the law. You see that thing? It is not a promise. It's a realm. But to test it, he said, everyone who I have called will first of all conform to the image of his only begotten son. That's where the journey begins. If there is, there is who to become in order to enter it. The image of his son. That is the same image he had in mind. Let us make man in our image. I'm coming to explain the concept of image. So that you understand where we say becoming like Christ is the pathway to glory. Because when God taught this, a man could not get to it. What he did was he sent his son. His son modeled it. Hello, are you with me? His son modeled it. Because I'm going to explain what the image means. That Jesus had to model it for us and he left. Why he was on earth? Why he took that form of the image that his death and resurrection now has left the testament for us to copy? Why he was conforming after that image? Because Jesus spoke, he said, I, I can of myself do nothing. As I hear, I do. He said, I do always what pleases him. As long as the pursuit of alignment with God was his goal. Nature were subject to him. How can you tell people bring food for men that have been fasting for three days and you brought five loaves, two fishes? That would not be enough for Godzi alone. That's an appetizer. And then there are 5,000 men minus women and children. That's why Peter said, I beg, no ten, I beg, no do this thing now. So let them go. I beg, person go die here. And he himself knew what to do. Bros is a realm. Tell your neighbor is a realm. Yes. Jesus did not leave it as a promise. He lived into it as a reality. That you are in a boat, a storm came. You woke up and spoke to it. There was peace be still. It's dominion. That is having dominion over sea, over air. That that thing was not a promise. It was a reality. But the condition was that Jesus, in his earthly ministry, had to conform into the image that the father had. Where he now left, he now became the express image that the father was speaking figuratively. So that this image I'm talking about, if you don't understand it, just become Christ. Then you enter into it. Hi. That's what I say. So we need to define what the image is. Because that's, that's where the journey to authentic Christianity, that's where the journey of 
Christianity that has influence, significant transformational ministry is rooted in the pursuit of wanting his image. Because if you start chasing all the promises in the scriptures, you won't get them. God gave man one assignment to become his image and to chase his kingdom. Every other thing will be added. So which one is easier? So this is what Paul said. To conform after the image of his son. Please follow me. Follow me. That he might become what? The firstborn among many brethren. Give me verse 30. Verse 30. Verse 30. He said, moreover, whom he predestinated that has conformed after his image, these he has also called. Who he has called, he has also justified. And whom he justified, what will happen? He will glorify. The glory realm is the dominion realm. That glory realm is the dominion realm. But where the journey is, you can now see the layers. So before you get to the glory realm, which is the dominion realm, it begins with conforming after his image. That the journey of conforming after his image, he began to explain how it starts. It starts by being called into Christ. The second is justification before you enter into it. Second Corinthians 3 and verse 18. So we all with open face behold us in a glass the glory of the Lord. And we are changed into the same image from glory to glory. This scripture has always been a if you are a student of the Bible who have decided to route your life to enter into the promise of scriptures using scriptural principles you find out that this scripture seems to be confusing sometimes I am beholding as in a glass the glory let me put it in a simple way hello are you with me I am beholding a glory Eh? a possibility in front of me is looking like an I am beholding it but I'm not in it anytime you read the promise of the scripture they come so loud as promises of possibilities the scripture is standing before you the promises are clear in your mind but look around you it doesn't seem as if you have entered it that's what we are beholding that's in a glass you are looking through the mirror of God's word and you are seeing that realm but the Bible now explains here how we enter it is we have to be changed after the same image. So the glory realm will first of all appear as an image realm. That once I become the image, I'm in the glory. The fastest way to that dominion realm is alignment. Now, nature teaches us the Bible, so I'm going to use something very small, simple to explain it. One example of this law of dominion we are teaching is exemplified as the law of reflection using the moon and the sun relationship. It explains it. Now, if you did geography in secondary school, it, it, it will be an opportunity to remind yourself of what science has proven which is not different from the scriptures that the moon does not have a light of its own. Please, are we together? But yet, we have a light we attribute to moonlight. If it doesn't have a light of its own, then where did it get the light? So, simply what the moon does is to align itself in the same orbit with the sun so that it will simply reflect the light of the sun as if it is its own light. So, when the alignment is 100%, you have full moon. When you have 90%, eh? Three quarter. When you have 25%, eh? Crescentric. When you have 0%, eclipse. Once there is alignment, the glory of its light is proportionate to the level of its alignment. 
As it positions well, it reflects well. So this scripture is saying, as we behold as in a glass the glory of God, we are seeing that glory. But that revelation leaves us with an image that we must be changed after. As we are changing to that image, we, move, we change in glory. As we are changing to the image, we change. I'm driving to the concept of the image of God. Someone say the image of God. So let's understand what we mean in scripture as the image of God. So I'm going to bring three explanations to it. And then in the course of the month, we'll take that journey. If you're a child of God here, listening to me, the primary pursuit of your Christian journey is to become like Christ and seek the interests of his kingdom. Every other thing within the economy of dominion and glory will be on the platter of gold. There are things you won't pray for. There are things you don't fight for. There is a realm where you ask, it's given. There is a realm where you don't ask, it is given. Before they ask, I will answer. Why they are here speaking, I will respond. They are realms. They are realms. The fuller the glory, the stronger the expression. The same Bible that says, ask and you shall receive. It's the same Bible that says, before they ask, I will do it. Why they are here speaking, I will perform. They are, they are, they are both Christians. They are two oppressions, but they are not at the same level. Please, are you still here? Oh, someone is asking a question. Which Bible did he quote now? Matthew 7 7. I'll be at this every day. I have more than a son. Today, I brought myself. Ask, it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall. Eh? Fine, knock, it shall be open to you. Is a realm here. You need to make a motion. Eh? Hello, are you with me? In this realm, in this realm, he is able to give you exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think. But this is the elementary realm. Ask, eh? It shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, it shall be open to you. But there is another realm 6524 Isaiah 6524. And it shall come to pass before they call. The other one say ask. But this time is a realm where before you ask, bros, in this God that are dead to your struggle does not re re reveal the absence of God. It reveals your levels of God. Your struggles, your struggles does not reveal absence of God. It reveals your level in God. Because a realm where someone needs to ask to get is a realm where someone else is in this same possibility before he asks, is given. Why is he speaking? There is a performance. Bros, there is age mate, there is grace mate. So the density of expressions in dominion is going to be to the degree to which the image of God is formed in you. Because the law is to him, for him to enter into dominion, he must have been found to have become his image and operating his likeness. Anything short of that, you have dominion. To the level you are in his image and functioning his likeness. That is the level to which dominion. That's why Jesus woke up from sleep. There is no, it's not a product of okay, that because he fasted, heavens had him. No. If you need to fast for power to move, is a realm. There is a realm where you don't need it. Power will still move. I'm telling you, realms in God. The same realm, the same way there is a realm in finances, the realm of millions. There is also a realm of billions. There is still realms of multiples of millions. So sometimes, if you're in a realm and you're seeing a higher realm, it looks impossible. But the more you become, the more you reflect. So I'm using physical things to explain the descriptions of scriptures. The problem is not from God's side. The problem is our side. So that was why as I started studying Paul and I found out why Paul was very emphatic in his revelation. The emphasis of his revelation was the emphasis of grace. But the focus of his grace teaching is not in what Jesus did in the cross. That's one dimension. But the depth 
depth of his discussion of this grace message was becoming Christ by the provision of grace. That's why he said, follow me as I follow Christ. And why it was his pursuit to become like Christ. He said that I may know him. The power of his resurrection. The fellowship of his suffering. That's why the man's handkerchief was casting out devils. Dominion. A name. His name was registered in the realms of darkness. That prince said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? That's dominion. So the question is, I know we look like church members. If God reveals you in the spirit, do you look like Christ? So let's answer that question. Image. Your thought, your action, is it in tandem with Christ? None of us here have seen Christ, but we have read about him. If someone have not seen Christ and read about him and then met you and say, this looks like the Jesus I read about. To the degree of that alignment is to the degree of your dominion. That's what we're talking about. That's why the subject of character formation, you cannot say you're in Christ and you're not bearing fruits worthy of your repentance. Then it means your alignment is not after Christ. We can actually conform after religion. Know how to sing church song. Know how to give church greetings. Know how to dance church dance. And even preach church preaching. And not yet reflect Christ. How do I know? He said, many shall do miracles in my name. I said, know them not. He will only identify with those who carry his image. Alright. Let's look at the image. Genesis, go back to Genesis chapter 1. Let's quickly run. Having laid this foundation, then it becomes easy. Please, are we together? Yes. Hello, have you followed up till now? Yes. So, the journey into dominion, the realm of glory, the realm of sweatless breakthrough is only going to be de to the degree of your conforming after his image and operating after his likeness. Hello, are we together? Now, please write this down. The journey of Christ likeness is a journey that will begin with self death. Death to self. Self is a disposition of man that makes him impossible to be like Christ or look like Christ. Self. I will close by showing you the three domains that must come under the arrest of this adventure in being like Christ. Now, until these three domains look like Christ, it is not possible you be his image. You'll be like something that looks like the image. So, for a new image of Christ to emerge through you in the realm of the spirit, another image must go down. How John the Baptist put it, he said, I must decrease that he will increase. I, I, me, me. The I is the part of you that seeks your way that is opposite his way. Yes. That part that seeks to self-preserve. That part that seeks to self-promote. Hmm. The goal of Christ-likeness is to become like him. And the consequence of that is flesh will die. The will of the man will be surrendered. His vision will be single. Image. Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our own image. Now, the Hebrew word for image. Are you with me?
The Hebrew word for image is Salem. Salem. T S E L E M. The T is silent, is Salem. It means resemblance. So when God said, let us make man in our image, he was not saying, let us make what looks like us physically. He said, let's make something that looks like us in attributes, resemblance. So, we look like God in creation not in our form but in our dimension because God is in dimensions. Please, are you with me? That's why man is a being existing in three dimensions. Soul, spirit and body. God exists in three dimensions. I've taught you it's not three in one. It's one in three expressions. He can, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. One. Three are one. So, the, the creations of God has the signature of Trinity in it. So, when you are saying, ah, he made us in his image, so I look like God. He's not talking about your pointed nose and flat nose. God cannot have pointed flat at the same time. No, he's not talking about the physical resemblance. No. We are made in the image of God physically because God is not, you, he doesn't have a physical form. He has a dimensional form. Please, I, are you, I, please, I, I want you to follow me. That is why there is no physical human being that looks like God. But in our expressions of our reality, we function in that possibility. Three forms. So the aspect of the image, God is laying emphasis because I'm trying to disabuse your mind. When we say we look like God, we're not saying that, you, bros, you look like your father. If I bring your papa and mama, I will tell you the nose came from here, the eye came from here, the leg came from here. Because this one is a borrowed vessel. The version of God Hello? That you look exactly like it's your spirit. And you can't pick it out. It's when we go there. We, that's, that's why the Bible says when he appears, we'll be like him. But in creation, we were created to be dimensional, three dimensional as God. But when he was talking about dominion, the emphasis here is not resemblance by looks, it's resemblance by attributes. Another Hebrew meaning of that word image is representative figure. An image or a person, a creation capable of representing another. The only term that can explain it better is the word an ambassador. Because an ambassador of a nation representing the nation in another nation does not speak of his interests. By the oath of office, is expected to speak for the nation he's representing. Ambassador of Nigeria to the United States will not go there and be speaking against the president. You will just lose your office. You will just get the call. Return back to your father's house. You may hate the president, but you speak for the president. Because you don't speak for yourself. Your essence is to represent the interest of the king, the nation you are representing. So when God is saying, let him become my image, he's saying, I'm looking for something who can represent me where I'm not there. That is heavy. So when God says, this is my image, he's telling you, I found something that can represent me. So when the Bible said, and a loud voice shouted, this is my beloved son, in whom I well please, God was after years. I said, I found someone who can represent me. That from this journey, that this one will no more be a son of Joseph. He will be the son of God. Because at this moment, he's going to pursue my interests. Capable of representation. Once the ability to represent sets in, you will find that the person will act in his likeness. Acting his likeness is easier when seeking representation for him becomes the focus. So what the Bible talks about there is clearly, I'm looking for an image. One who in attribute looks like me. In 
in representation, he thinks of me. Are you still with me? Please, are you still with me? Let's pick one of the attributes of God. One of the very popular attributes of God, which most of us know, is holiness. Am I correct? Am I correct? Holiness. Someone say holiness. Someone say holiness. If you take the word holiness in isolation, you think that holiness means to be pure without sin only. But that is not it. Oh, I was shocked when I began to search the scripture and I found out that no. Purity is one dimension to holiness. The shirt Gose is wearing is white. But if he wears the same white again, hello, are you with me? It will not be white. To be maintained as white, there is something has to do to make it white. Please, are you with me? So that tells you that the state of this white clothes is going to be dependent on other possibilities in the owner to keep it. That brings me to explain that holiness, the Hebrew word for holiness is hugo, which means pure. Number two, blameless. Number three, one. One. You will not know why Deuteronomy chapter 6, I think verse 4, it says, for the Lord thy God is one. The first time I read it, I think that, I thought that God was only laying emphasis on the subject of um, the fatherhood ideology of God. That there is only one God. No. God began to show me it's beyond that. That even though that he is the supreme God, but however, there is an attribute in him that makes him God. And that is called holiness. Is the capacity to be one. That revelation of oneness is a revelation that expresses God as an integral. One. Integral. Characters are described. Hello, are you with me? Letters are described as characters. Because one in Nigeria is one in UK. One in UK is one in China. Please, are you following what I'm saying? Because the characters are the same. So, lectors are characters because anything that has predictability, consistency, is described as character. So, when the Bible said, for the Lord is holy, another way to see is for the Lord is one. Meet him in the morning, he's the same. Afternoon, the same. Night is the same. He changed not. Consistency in all his ways. Predictability. Bros, it takes effort to be that. To meet this white, always white, there is a lot of work. To maintain that, to maintain that integrity. That he said that you meet him in the next 20 years, the same thing he said, he still keeping to it. Do you know the reason why the gospel doesn't have influence? Is that we preach one thing and we behave a different thing. Our Lord, the Lord our God, He's one. He's not two. The oneness here is not that you don't have other gods. No. He's talking about He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Talking about the place of integrity. So when God is saying, I'm looking for an image, what God is saying is, I'm looking for one that is holy, not just one that is pure and without blame. Is I'm looking for one that is consistent. One that has integrity. What, that's why the Bible says, who shall come to the holy hills? He said, who shall do business with God? He said, he that sweareth to his own heart and turneth it back. Integrity. What we are discussing is that 
Can you begin to make the pursuit of Christ likeness your goal? The fruit of the spirit becomes the fruit that people see. It's see how we know, how we know, how we measure. Because so, someone will be saying that these things look impossible. Paul began to teach us how we can measure a man to the degree to which he looks like God. The only way to know is the principle of fruit and tree. The identity of a tree is known by its fruit. By their fruit, what? So how we know is when we see the fruits of the spirit showing forth in your life to the degree to which you have them is the degree to which you are aligned to him. So Paul said, even though I speak with tongues of angels and men, I have not love. I am not after his image. That is why we live in a generation where gifts are magnified over fruit. That someone can prophesy. We embrace him, venerate him. But the person is a liar, is a cheat, is a fornicator. What will happen is that when we throw that part, we we'll become a generation of people who have the form of godliness, but without the power thereof. Colossians chapter 3 verse 9. Give me Colossians 1 15. Then you now go to 3 and verse 9. So, this now brings the distinction. Everybody listen to me. Jesus' death on the cross made us righteous. Someone say, I am righteous. Your righteousness is your position in God. For example, as long as James is consigned in the house of Eze, he's a son. It won't be taken from him. The only person who has the ability to take it from him is his father. But our heavenly father says that nothing you do that will make me take it from you. But Eze can be a son of his father and not have relationship with the father. That lack of relationship is a condition of broken fellowship. So righteousness is our position in God. Sanctification is our condition in God. <laughs> when a child is born, they look physically like their parents. But if that is all that the child receives, after a while, the child can behave different from the parents. So a man can be very good and moral and give back to a son who is a hooligan. What was missing was not genetics. What was missing is nurture, not nature. Please, am I communicating? Hey, please, are you with me? Follow me. Follow me. What is missing? So, that brings me to the subject that I want to introduce now. That you can give birth to a child by nature. They will have physical resemblance. But when proper nurture is missing, what will happen is that they will have your looks, but they will not have your likeness. They will have your physical looks, but they will not have your attributes. What matters is not the look as much as the attributes. A man can have a son, but when he lacks his attributes, there are certain things cannot entrust with him. I'm, 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 are you with me? It's like a man that has a son, photocopy, but when it comes to character, the guy is squanders money, and this man is a businessman. He will look for another person to entrust the business until the son develops. That's why the Bible said, until a child, as long as a hair remains a child, it does not depart from a, a servant, though he be lots of all. So, He's kept on that tutors until the time upon the end of the father. So, 
Though he is a son, physically, but in attributes that will make him be like the father is missing. So that failure in image in terms of attribute makes the father not allow him enter in certain abundance that should be his. So your limit in expression of dominion is not because you don't look like the father. It's because in attribute you are not looking like him. So Eze may look like the father biologically. But if Eze's father is a business tycoon and Eze is now 25 years, graduate from school, but cannot manage anything, doesn't have financial discretion, doesn't have the discipline of entrepreneurship, does not hate hard work, runs from work, always watching film. He looks like the father physically, but in the attributes that will qualify him to enter into that same realm where his father has, he lacks it. So what God does is to allow him to go through teachers in order to become it. Please, are you understanding my illustration? This is the gap in our Christian experience. Jesus for 30 years was looking like son of Joseph. But the moment he experienced this, he says, this might be love son. Now friends, this is where the journey, the gap is. Who is the, give me verse 14. Let's start from verse 14. So I round off. Oh, I have 10 more minutes, okay? In whom we have what? Redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Semicolon to explain. Uh -huh. Verse 15. Who is what? The image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. Jesus, Paul was trying to explain here that the person that died for us did two things. Number one, he made atonement to bring us into justification. Hello, are you with me? But the rest of the journey is not going to be based on your decision to collaborate with the Holy Ghost in order to bear the fruits of the Spirit. That the more you yield to God, the fruits, righteousness, peace, joy, self-control, all those fruits, that when the fruits are seen in a consistent fashion, it's now called your character. That people will see it and say, oh, this one looks like Christ that we read in the Bible that we did not see. That thing that the apostles, the people in Antioch saw, he said, these are like Christ. They read about him, but they saw it in people walking on foot. I'm going to close by telling you the importance of character development. Because this kind of teaching is not a very is a discipleship teaching. Uh, it, it, it does not appeal to your emotions. It it appeals to your is a, a war against the flesh to help you take a decision. I am going far. I can't be playing. I'm going far. I'm going far. I have weights of destiny. I, I can't be like balloon. I must carry. I must have gravitas. Jesus became the express image by providing atonement and becoming a model that anyone that wants to conform to the image of God just look at Jesus, follow him. That is why. In mentorship, a mentor makes you to look like him. In discipleship, will make you to look like Christ. That's the difference. Anybody training you after himself, you will only be the best of their version. The goal of the journey with the Holy Spirit is not to make you like your pastor. It's to make you like Jesus. That was why Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. The moment you stop seeing Christ in me, stop following. That, that's the weight of that statement. The moment you stop seeing Christ in me, stop following. Because for me, Paul, my goal is to conform completely, completely, completely. And the more he conformed. Do you know? Have you read his stories? He said he was in the deep three times. Someone who has death, as in they stoned him, they certified him dead, and they left. And brethren surrounded him and he jacked up. And, and he was up discussing in the book of is it collections of Philippians. He said, To be with the Lord, it is sweet. to be with you, is for your benefit. To go or to go, I'm in between. 
but I choose to stay. How can a man have that will over death? It's dominion. The danger of our transactional gospel is that it's obscuring Christ. We're amplifying what Jesus did and obscuring people from becoming like Christ. In becoming like Christ, you have no restriction in having what Christ had. The goal, the goal of him becoming the firstborn among many brethren is that the goal of the Father is that what he became, all, all the brethren will become it. Please, am I communicating? Yes. You know, some of us, when we read the story that Jesus walked on water, you think, ah, is one. No, go and read the book, Melteri, like a mighty wind. In Donatia Revival, people walked on water. Acts of Apostle has been repeated severally, documented. These things are written for us to know. Everything that Jesus did could be replicated in mortals, but it's to the depth of your alignment. Give me Colossians chapter 3. Verse 9 and 10. So when we are talking about becoming like Christ, we are talking about taking a decision to look inwardly. To look at your character. Is the expression of your attribute consistent with Christ? Here, yeah, you're not comparing yourself with anybody. I'm not compa don't compare yourself with me. Or you enter Wahala. The real standard is Christ. Please, is someone hearing what I'm saying? The standard here is Christ. The point is that pick the mirror of the world and look into it. It's going to show you an image that is far from who you are. Now chase after that image. That's what we're talking about. See what the Bible says. Lie not to one another. Saying that ye have put off the old man. As long as the old man is still in you, lying will still be with you. I told you, in pursuit of Christ-likeness, the goal is to kill self, the old man. That old man that behaves in a way that if you look at it and look like Christ, you say, the two don't look together. Why there is no more integrity in business, even in church, it's because of this subject. It's not because we don't sing religious songs. The greatest danger of being in church is that you can conform without being transformed. Yes. Put up the old man with his deeds. I told you the principle of identification of image is attributes. By their fruits, you shall what? Know them. The old man has his deeds. You want to understand it? Galatians chapter 5. He said the works of the flesh. He started listing it. Lust, anger, hatred, bitterness, covetousness. If they are still struggle in your soul, it's simply because it measures how far you are from Christ likeness. And the beginning of that journey begins today with a decision. I will press into his nature. That thing that this Job prayed, he said. I will be satisfied. Sorry, the psalmist. He said, I will be satisfied when I awake in his likeness. I will be satisfied. I will be satisfied. Psalm 17 verse 15. Verse 14, sorry. Psalm 17, 14. I will be satisfied when I awake in his likeness. Next verse. Go back, go back. We'll come to that. Go to that Colossians chapter 3. Next verse, verse 10 is my emphasis so that we pray. Please, can we read it together? No, 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 no. Can we read it together? One to go. He said, put on the new man. Which is renewed in knowledge. So the new man was given to you the moment you accepted Jesus. But now, you now have distinct legislation of will. To either feed the new man by feeding with the knowledge of the image of him. That means, when you want to deal with lying, find out what his word says about it. Use it until the old man, 
that has the attributes of lying dies. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? The old man is not a person. The old man is a consciousness that expresses itself in deeds. The old man is not a person. It's a consciousness. It's a survival consciousness that makes you, if you are fixing a contact, lie. If you find something that says, oh, lost. It's a consciousness. The goal of salvation is that as I begin to press into Christ likeness, I'm going to start feeding my soul with the knowledge of the image of God. How Jesus lived. I will press that knowledge into my soul until that consciousness die with the deeds. When that happens, a new character, a new me that used to be very volatile with anger, will now see the same thing and I'm calm. So instead of anger, you have gentleness. Instead of pride, you see meekness. Easy to correct. Easily to be entreated. Instead of lust, you see self-control. In the same person. In the same person. It is only possible by, are you feeding on the knowledge of the image? The image. The knowledge of the image. Knowledge of the image. The struggle of believers in walking in holiness. Remember I gave you the three expressions of holiness. Purity. Being blameless. To be found without fault. And then oneness. To be consistent. Now for God to say be holy as I am holy. He's telling you that it is possible. But can I tell you the journey? The journey should be. Can I become one with him? Leave the one of being blameless. is natural. Hey, Are you with me? When a way of life becomes your way of life, you do it effortlessly. You know, I posted a picture, a, 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 a video within our, our subgroup. They, they were they were products of this. I saw the video where a man he was single, fell on the bed when he was not married. Listen to me. I have not. I have lived in it. You're already sleeping and snoring. They wake you up. Please, babe. We need to make the bed. You will stand. And for nine years, it has not stopped. That consistency is a product of a making. So when you now extrapolate the same thing when it comes to behavior of a believer, they say that this one is blameless. It's because it's something has been doing consistently, but it begins by becoming one. Becoming one with God. Then walking blameless is easy. Then walking pure will be easy. The goal is this. Can you use the knowledge of God to kill the consciousness of the old man with his deeds? Because self will seek preservation. You are caught in a dangerous way. The only way is to lie so that you escape. is self-preservation. It's a consciousness. It's a consciousness. Then you come to the place say, I'll be one with my words. Hello, are you with me? Hey, please, are you with me? So, when we talk about character, we are talking about Christ-likeness as a character. We are talking about where your words, your thoughts, and your actions are one. We are going to extract it in the course of these teachings. It is possible. Because what I'm saying is that it sounds difficult until God began to take me on this journey. I now knew that God's standard of holiness is not our standard. Our own standard is, ah, the day I didn't, oh, that's good. No. God's standard is not about freedom from the sin. It's freedom from the consciousness of it. Oh, you are not getting me. When the Bible says, sin shall not have dominion over you, that you obey the laws. It means at the lost realm, once loss is still existing, the consciousness of it is there. Oh God, you will fall. God is talking about the way the God consciousness gets stronger than that other consciousness, that that consciousness is killed. Then its deeds will not find expression. That is where his thoughts, that's where Jesus said, I can of all my own self do nothing. It's not that he didn't have a will, he submitted it. That's why love 
was so much flowing from him, even on the cross, looking at the people that offended him. I guess he looked and saw the blind that he healed, the crippled that he was pointing at him, crucifying him. You think your heart would not be offended? He shouted, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they are doing. That possibility is only going to happen from your soul when the pursuit of Christ's likeness is the goal. If not, uh, in this world, listen, if you want to do good, people will deal with you. Here, yeah, right to today, right today, right it to today. People will show you shege. People will show you shege. If you now create system to protect your heart, ah, people will crucify you. That one is crucify you is one. So they will go to the grave where they bury you and resurrected you and now pee you and finish you. As long as man is cons consigned, there is nothing you do to satisfy man. That's why when God tells you about doing good works, do it, he said to him. Don't look at man. Don't look at man. You say you're helping man. Ah, they will do you something. But in journey of Christ likeness, the goal is not to impress man. It's not to impress anybody. It's to follow him. Now, the reason why a lot of people offended in God and offended the ministers and churches and pastors is because they came to follow man. They didn't come to follow Christ. I almost left the faith about 15 years ago. When I saw and heard what a minister I revered did. Oh my God. Oh my God. I, I, I declared a campaign against him. Anyway, God dealt with me, my foolishness in my level. That's why when I teach things I teach, I don't teach Bible only. I teach it from experience. In my frustration, he asked me a question one evening. He said, who died for you? Who saved you? Who forgave your sins? Then who are you following? That was the day I told myself, I won't do church, I will do Christ. I will seek him. He is my standard. He is my judge. I press to be like him. He is the soundness of my conscience. Hello, uh, Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Because if your reason to be holy is because let people not talk, the day you won't have people that talk, that day you find yourself compromised. Who was there with Joseph? But he said, how can I do this great wickedness? His standard, Christ-likeness. See how that standard made him walk in dominion. He was answering dreams. You didn't sleep with the man you were answering. See Daniel them. The more people propose in their heart to enter into Christ. See, the subject of Christ-likeness is not a New Testament theology. It is a concept of the image of the Godfather. All through the pages of scripture, men has followed and copied that image. The more they became it. Look at Daniel. He proposed his heart not to define himself. He, the instructions of God became enthusiastic. He was pressing to meet them by the help of the Spirit. The more he looked like it, the more he expressed them. Imagine wisdom. Wisdom. Like the gods. That you see an invisible hand write a celestial language. You come and interpret it. Oga, Iwabara. Let me, not, let me use it. You a spirit. You didn't sleep with a man. You came and interpreted his dream. Nebuchadnezzar fell down and bowed. He said, you didn't sleep with women. You can get the dream and interpret it. No, you are above us. But how did he start? The journey. He proposed in his heart. It's a decision. We can all be here. But we all not look like Christ. It's a journey. It's a journey. This is a month of character development. You're going to look into yourself. How much of the fruit of the spirit is consistent with me? No, Nobody is judging who. It's you with God. It's very easy to do church and miss heaven. Very easy. Now the reality of the other side is going. But I don't know if you're here tonight. Your prayer is Psalm 17 verse 15. We close with it. Psalm 17 15. As for me, I will behold his face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake in his likeness. This was David's obsession. This was David's obsession. Yeah, he made mistakes along the way. But he never quit. Please, are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. It's a journey of saying, if the fruit of the Spirit is this, and the Holy Spirit lives in me, 
Why is the fruit not showing? That's a sincere question. I pray in tongues. I speak in tongues of men. But love. You say, yes, I have love, but I still keep malice. I keep hatred. I have brethren that I don't talk to. I have roommates who I, I don't greet. How, how is that Christianity? That the Holy Spirit in you that should tell us he's in you. He's a spirit. We can't see him. But how we know he's in you is the fruits that come out of you. Then the question is, how can I claim to have him when I don't have his fruit? That's the real question of authentic Christianity. If all my Holy Ghost is tongues, but I have no love, I have no patience, patience, I'm not meek, nobody can correct me. I don't have self-control. I don't have temperance. I don't forbear. The question is this. Which Holy Ghost do you have? Because you don't have his fruit. So the question is this. Can we join David to pray this prayer? I will only be satisfied. Nothing else will make sense until I look like him. Nothing else. Rise your feet. Let's pray. Until I see your face. Until I know your way. My worship will not. My prayer will not stop. I, 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 until I see your face. Oh, until I know Oh, yes, my worship will not My prayer will not stop I, 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 I. Listen, the essence of this foundational teaching is to bring you back to a consciousness that this realm is possible. Number two is to tell you the reason why it seems as if my life looks far from this world. It's not because the Holy Ghost is not in you. He's in you. It's because over the years you have fueled the other consciousness of the flesh. And that is why it's did. God is not saying, go to my knowledge. The new man you received is only renewed. That consciousness is renewed by the knowledge. The more you stay with my word, the more you stay with my word, the more you stay, you keep beholding. That image, you are changed. God is saying, can you choose a new master today? Can you make, the, the way, the, listen, this one is, this is the code of a disciple. You know, he's wanted to be a church member, a Christian, but he's not to be a, a Christ disciple. A disciple of Christ is one who has taken up the cross to say, all I live is to be his representation. That's all I live. It is a face in Christian journey where one makes up his mind. I may not look appealing to all, but I seek to please one. My maker, my lover. In, see, Dan, Dave, Shedak, Meshach, and Abednego had no business. They were privileged to be in the king's court, so there was nothing, but they proposed in their heart. It's a decision. No? It's a decision. But the moment the decision is made, the Bible says in a great house there are many vessels. Some to honor. Do you know my greatest fear is that seated in this hall a gifted man. If, if I if, if God helps you to see the prophecy you carry, you see how heavy, heavy it is. But can I tell you the platform that will carry the prophecy is your character, excellence of dignity, excellence of power, unstable as water, you will not excel. It was not a cause, it was a consequence. You say, Why? He lacked self-control. You saw your father's wife and went into her. It's as long as that weakness lies in you. Though you are excess of dignity, there's a lot of power big enough, my strength, you will not excel. Why are the promises of God falling right before her eye? It's not because God is not strong enough to perform it. It's because you don't have the character to sustain the performance. Can we cry like David? I will know nothing else will satisfy me until I awake, until I begin to look like him, until I begin to talk like him, until I begin, until he becomes my consciousness, until he becomes my reality. This is what I'm pressing for, nothing else. 
Because in this realm, every other thing will answer to me. Can you pray? Can you pray? Can you take five minutes to respond? I don't know what God taught you, but as for me, heaven is my goal. Dominion is the consequence. I want to please one king. I have one audience. He's my Lord. He's the one I seek to be like. Glory, breakthrough, all these things are not to be test. They are supposed to follow us. But now they are our pursuit. Having them is it wrong? No. That's what Jesus says. The Father's will to give you the kingdom. What is in the kingdom? He said, for that is the kingdom. The power and the glory. So the power is in the kingdom. The glory is the kingdom. But we are testing power and glory. Instead of testing the kingdom. Can you propose like that? Now? Can you propose? Can you propose today? Can you propose today? Can you make a decision of a new work? That I'm going to give attention to my inner life. I'm going to give attention. I'm not going to allow to be encumbered with church activities. Ministry programs, they are good. But if they are taking the chunk of my attention from taking care of my soul. My worship will not, my prayer will not stop. Until I see, until I see, until I know, until I know, until I know your grace. Oh, my worship will not end. My prayer will not stop. Until I see, can you pray? Can you talk to him? Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. There is no longevity in Christ. No longevity in God. No longevity in destiny without character. Many mighty men started out great. Greater than Billy Graham's, but they disappeared. But what kept me the other hand was a modest covenant. A modest covenant. He sat down with his friends and they took an oath of allegiance. On consecration of financial matters, on consecration of sexual matters, on consecrations on testimonies. They will not fabricate things, they will not misappropriate funds, they will not have illicit relationships. And see the testimony of greatness. The question is tonight is a night of decision. Today is your Jabok experience. Today you are intelligent. We are going to give God the first thing of your heart to tell you. May I not be acquainted with sword, but the heart of my soul has not been circumcised with your sword. Paul put it this way. He said, We are not of them that handle the word of God craftily or deceitfully. He said, Lord, make me before you use me. Walk in me. Don't walk through me. Walk in me also. My worship will not end. My praise will not stop. Hey! I cannot do miracles in his name. And yet he says I don't know him. The question is this. What day do I know? Church of Jesus Christ, whether you are here or alive. God send me to herod it again. I am coming for a church without spot or wrinkle. When you see a man wearing a cloth that is wrinkled, it's because he chose to allow it. 
But when the man says no, I will not wear it. He goes out of his way to find an iron, a star iron in it. The cloth will straighten up. If you are wearing a dirty cloth, it is a choice. But if you say no, I'm going to wash it and wait for it to dry before I wear it. Tonight is a decision night. Because on that day, the secret of men's heart shall be made bare. Can you tell him, Lord, help me? That I will not be a castaway. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me.